Welcome everyone to History Forces podcast. I'm your host Stefan and today I'm going to present you important statistics and facts about the Battle of Verdun, the longest battle of World War I. Initially planned by Falkenhayn, German chief of the general staff, as a decisive breakthrough by, I quote, bleeding Franz White, it quickly backfired and turned into a meat grinder for both the French and the Germans. The Battle of Verdun was a very hard fought victory for the French army during the First World War. As a consequence, it became a symbol of the French resistance and an icon for a new form of patriotism. If you are interested in military history and particularly the World War I history, then you will find these 43 facts about the Battle of Verdun interesting. Let's start. Number one. During the first four days, only 60% of the initial French divisions were crushed by the Germans. Fact number two. Charles Nungesser, I think this is the pronunciation in French, I'm not very sure, a famous French fighter race, won 10 aerial victories during the Battle of Verdun, from a total of 43 achieved during World War I. Number 3. From a total number of casualties, approximately 800,000 soldiers from both sides, it is estimated that 70% were caused only by artillery. Number 4. Despite the heavy artillery bombardment from the first day, the German forces still suffered 600 casualties, when they expected almost zero. Number 5. On May 8, 1916, 679 German soldiers were killed because of an accidental explosion of the ammo depot in Fort Duamont. According to some rumors, the explosion was triggered by some soldiers who brewed a pot of coffee on a box with hand grenades. Oops! Number 6. During the peak of the German bombardment, on June the 1st, 1916, it was estimated that 2,000 artillery shells were dropped on Fort Vaux every hour. Number 7. In total, during the Battle of Verdun, the French artillery fired 23 million shells against the German positions. Number 8. In the initial phase of the offensive, the German advance can be best described as steadily, around one, between one and two miles in the first three days. Number nine. In February 1916, at the beginning of the offensive, the Germans mobilized 168 planes, 14 observation balloons and four zeppelins for the purpose of achieving aerial superiority. By comparison, the French had only 17 planes at the beginning of the Battle of Verdun. Number 10. Though the Germans had the initial air superiority over Verdun, they failed to utilize it to cut down all French supplies to the battlefield. Number 11. The first aerial victory of the Escadrille Lafayette was obtained on May 18, 1916, five days, uh, the name, I wanted to say, the name of the pilot was Kiffin Rockwell, an American from North Carolina. Number 12. Fort Duamont was captured by a small German unit of only 19 officers and 79 soldiers without a fight. It happened on February 25, 1916, just three days after the official start of the battle. Number 13. During their last major assault against Verdun, 
Between 22 and 23 of June, the Germans bombarded the French defenses with 1,010, I mean 110,000 shells filled with phosphogen gas. Number 14. After a surprise artillery bombardment in which 2,000 tear gas shells were used, the Germans captured 2,400 French soldiers. Number 15. Before the Battle of Verdun, the French intelligence service says lost the informational war. An important spy network of 16 agents under the command of Louis de Bettinier, a brave French woman, was discovered and consequently destroyed by the Germans. Number 16. Verdun was only on paper the best defended sector of the French front line. Joseph Joffre, commander-in-chief of the French army, ordered the removal of the heavy artillery guns from the forts. Only in August 1915, 40, uh, I mean 54 artillery batteries and 128,000 ammo rounds were removed from the forts around Verdun. His excuse was that Verdun was a very quiet sector of the front. How wrong he will prove to be. Number 17. The fate of the battle was literally decided by poor weather conditions, which delayed the German offensive by nine days. This brought precious time for the French, who anticipated the German plans. Number 18. Nine villages around Verdun were completely obliterated during the battle. These villages were never rebuilt and the inhabitants never returned after the battle ended. Number 19. There was a real possibility that the Battle of Verdun could have been avoided. In September 1914, the Germans were so close to capturing Verdun that the supply routes were cut off and the city was surrounded. Even Joffre ordered the commander of the French garrison to evacuate the city. Luckily for the French army, the commander of the Verdun garrison chose to disobey Joffre's orders. Number 20. Though the French forces received 85 heavy guns before the battle, the heaviest artillery guns still had only 305 mm caliber. By comparison, the Germans brought many howitzers of 380 to 405 mm calibers to sustain their offensive. 21. 75% of the artillery shells fired by the French army during the Battle of Verdun came from the famous 75 mm field guns. The French name Materiel, the 75 mm MLA 8 1897. Number 22. Fort Douaumont was the biggest among the 19 major and 14 minor forts of the Verdun region. Number 23. Future French leader Charles de Gaulle was captured by the Germans in March 1916 near Fort Douaumont. Number 24. Believing that Charles de Gaulle was killed in battle, Philippe Patin awarded him the Legion d'Honneur, highest French order decoration. Number 25. At the start of the Battle of Verdun, the French artillery was low on ammunition. Only 600, only 6,400 rounds for the 75mm guns. While the Germans had 6,000 rounds, rounds for each of their artillery batteries instead. Number 26. Because Fort Douaumont was captured so easily, the French accused the Germans of Rue de Guerre, military deception, uh, translated from French. According to the French military, the German troops were French uniforms, thus confusing the defenders. Number 27. According to a German commander, General von Galwitz, at a rate of advance of only 3 kilometers in 4 months, the German forces would have reached Verdun 
in 1920. Number 28. Seven French aerial squadrons were specially reserved for the defense of the critical supply road known today as Voie Sacre, or Secret Way, translated from the French. Number 29. The mastermind behind the German offensive at Verdun was Erich von Falkenheim, the chief of the German general staff. Unlike Hindenburg and Ludendorff, who wanted to prioritize the Eastern Front, Falkenheim, though, that the decisive battle should take place on the Western Front. Number 30. All German offensive operations at Verdun have been permanently stopped on September 2, 1960. The order was issued by Falkenhayn's successor, Paul von Hindenburg. Number 31. The French achieved artillery parity with the Germans at Verdun in July 1960. Number 32. Due to the rotation system, 75% of the entire French army participated in the Battle of Verdun. Number 33. Future German Blitzkrieg experts Hans Guderian and Erich von Manstein took part in the Battle of Verdun. Number 34. La Treux de Tassigny, I don't know if this is the correct pronunciation, the famous French commander of World War II, fought during the Battle of Verdun and lived enough to arrest the Crown Prince of Germany, who was the commander of the French, of the German armies, excuse me, at Verdun, at the end of the Second World War. Number 35. The famous order de Chona Pass was issued by the French general Robert Nivelle on June 23, 1916. Number 36. The village of Fleury changed hands between the French and the Germans 16 times before it was finally secured by the French on August 15, 1916. Number 37. After being deposed on August 29, 1916, Erich von Falkenhayn took command of the 9th Army in Transylvania and together with August von Mackensen, he will crush the Romanian army who recently entered the war. Number 38. The official ending of any German offensive operation at Verdun was ordered by Paul von Hindenburg on September 12, 2, 1916. Number 39. For his crucial role in reorganizing the French defenses, Philippe Petain earned the nickname the Lion of Verdun. Number 40. Falkenhayn's offensive relied heavily on artillery. For this purpose, the Germans mobilized an impressive number of 1,200 artillery pieces of different calibers. 305, 318, 405 mm and 2.5. 7 million artillery shells were also gathered for the initial artillery bombardment. Number 41. The Secret Way, the French Voie Sacre, was literally the lifeline of the French resistance at Verdun. The 57-kilometer road between the city of Bar-le-Duc and Verdun was the center of the French logistics. For context, here are a few important numbers about Voie Sacre that saved the French army at Verdun. 600 trucks moved 48,000 tons of ammunition, 6,400 tons of other supplies, and 263,000 soldiers in the first days of the offensive. The supply route was so crucial that in 10 months of the Battle of Verdun, 16 labor battalions worked continuously to maintain it in good shape. Number 42. Approximately 10 million unexploded artillery shells are still stuck in the soil of Verdun. Annually, bomb squads are still removing 40 tons of unexploded ammo from the fields of Verdun. 
it is estimated that at this space the soil of Verdun will be cleared in centuries. 43. In May 1916, Falkenhayn believed that the French army lost five. Uh, 525,000 soldiers. This is over half a million soldiers. In reality, the French losses at this stage were only 130,000 troops. We hope that these 33 facts about the Battle of Verdun and statistics help you to better understand the scale and importance of this iconic battle of World War I. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If yes, please subscribe for more episodes like this. I wish you a very good day.